But I ain't gonna lie, I think it's time that we uh we have a little chat, cause, cause I don't think we're on the same page here. And uh I guess I need to come clean. <laughs> but what's going on guys? Zion here back again with another video solo dolo. You already know how I'm coming. Aye, you're probably like Zion, where's the intro? Where's the hype intro? Where's this? Where's that? Aye, I need you guys to chill, bro. Because recently I've been switching up the content on the channel and I feel like you guys are like scared for me or something, bro. So obviously, as you guys know, recently we've been doing a lot more, um, how can I say it? Zaza videos. There's been a lot more Zaza going on, but not only that, we've been switching up, just trying to get away from music. I've been reacting to a lot of stuff other than music. As you guys can see by the title and thumbnail of this video, we're checking out something completely different than we usually would check out. These times is something entertaining that I feel like you guys might like and I know I'm entertained by stuff like this So what uh, and you guys haven't been really dropping music You've been dropping other videos for me to check out but not that much music So I don't know if you guys really want to see music anymore Anyway with that being said and the last week of uploads that I've been uploading Yes, I've still been trying to upload every day, but we've been doing a lot of Zaza content when I say Zaza content I know you know what I'm talking about now a lot of these people are telling me I hey, Zion no way you started you started using Zaza no way Zion, oh Zion you shouldn't because it's bad for you and all these comments and stuff like that Trust me, I know bro, trust me, I know I think that because I've just started putting it on camera like on my YouTube I think that people think that like I'm a newbie or something or I, I just started smoking Bro, I can't lie, I, this might hurt some of you guys bro But I've been smoking since I was like 13 bro Before I ever picked up a camera, before I started making videos bro I just never brought it on camera Now obviously I'm older now, I'm of of age to do that, do you feel me? You know what I'm saying? I'm 18 plus, illegal age and stuff. Do you get what I'm saying? I say before it was illegal, but now I'm old enough to where I, I can put it on camera. Now I'm not gonna put in every single video that I do, but I just don't feel like it's a big issue anymore because it's not illegal for me to do it, if that makes sense. But yeah, with that being said, it's not an excuse. You guys should not use Zaza. Like, don't, don't, don't think because I'm using it, it's okay. That's not what I'm trying to say. Basically, what I'm trying to say is save your breath because. Like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I've been doing this for years and years and years. You guys are only just finding out about me using this stuff. I, if it changes your opinion on me, so be it. But at the end of the day, I know some people like watching this content. All right, let me just put it like this, because I don't want to drag this on any more than it's being dragged on. You guys are getting onto me for using Zaza. If I stop, hey, shut your mouth. If I stop using Zaza in the videos and stuff, I'm still going to use it off camera. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's like, I appreciate you guys telling me, oh bro, look after your health, look after yourself, don't do not do this, don't do that. Bro, but save your breath, innit? Because I'm not gonna listen, bro. Bro, because you can't save someone that doesn't want to be saved, you get what I'm saying? And I'm not saying I don't want to be saved, but I have to save myself before someone else can save me. And right now, I'm not saving myself. <laughs> but yeah, man, let's get into today's video. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The untold story of the largest counterfeit vape operation. Now, I ain't gonna lie, these niggas made millions off selling fake weed, bro. And I'm really trying to find out how they got away with this shit because I, I, how are you making fake weed? I understand it, 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 it's a vape. How's it fake? That means the contents that you're putting in there is not weed. Which is means it's not just a different drug, bro. I don't know if you guys do like these investigation type of things and stuff like that, but uh, make sure you got your Zaza on that. And uh, yeah, let's see how these kids made millions off selling vape weed. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Bruh. Let's find out how these kids made millions off fake weed, bro. It was in early 2018 when two brothers from a small town in Wisconsin had dreams of making millions. The younger one, a kid named... Oh, God, that's me right now. But except I'm not in a small town in Wisconsin. Where Huff Hines had been a hustler his whole life, always listening in on his mother's business meetings, flipping sneakers and used cars, and investing in the stock market the day he turned 18. But mm. his whole life changed when his older Hustle. brother, Jacob, introduced him to the world of T. THC cards. Whoa. Now, Tyler was never the type of guy to get high, but when he realized how lucrative a business counterfeit cards were, he couldn't resist taking advantage. Tyler's entrepreneurial spirit, paired with Jacob's extensive knowledge of the THC card market, no led way. him and his brother to create the largest illegal counterfeit vape operation in the US. Niggas love calling me when I'm about to start a bang of vid, but anyway, come on, come on, let's get into this. We need to lock in, fam. I'm trying to get like these two, bro. Nah, let me chill. Let me chill. Entrepreneurial spirit. I'm trying to get entrepreneurial rich, fam. THC card market, led him and his brother to create 
create the largest illegal counterfeit vape operation in the U.S., selling an estimated 2.9 million cards and making millions of dollars. 2.9 million cards. Now think about this, bro. Each cart is probably about $30. Let's give or take. Maybe they're selling some for 20, some for 40. Do you get what I'm saying? Let's do that real quick. Well, he said 2.1, wait, 2.9 million. Oh, I can't even do the math for that, bro. But just know that's bad brand. In just a year and a half. However, thanks to some strict parents and their kid, the Huff Hines brothers operation came crashing down just as fast as they grew it. Two brothers face charges in a large scale counterfeit vaping operation. Authorities say their mother was in on it. They see Wait, the mom was in on it. Oh no, this is getting spicy. Imagine your mom's a drug dealer, bro, drug lord. Bro, this is not El Chapo. This this Mel El Chapina. This Miss El Chapina, you, you feel me? Like she going crazy. Street value of one point five million dollars. <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, I look, you need an ad blocker if we're gonna watch fits like this. I'm not gonna lie, bro. It's not gonna happen. Region of South. You of one. Bro, the mom, the mom was in fold. Never the mom's in fold. The region of southeastern Wisconsin is the quiet village of Paddock Lake. Surrounded by vast farmlands, quiet country roads, and dotted with clusters of trees, it's a peaceful place that's far removed from the bustle of big cities. The village, home to about 3,200, is built around its namesake lake. 3,200 people in the village, bro. That's why you're getting caught. 3,200 people, bro. You probably, I probably know 3,200 people. A hub for summer boating and winter ice fishing. It's the kind of town where everyone knows everyone, especially when it Telling comes you. to their local high school. Westosha Central High School acts as the central hub for students across the area. The school, standing ah. on the outskirts of Paddock Lake, is a modern building that almost feels out of place next to the village's small homes and rustic charm. But it's here where the youth of the Westosha region gather to learn, play sports, and in the case of Tyler Huffhines, make some questionable decisions. Tyler grew up with his older brother, mother, and grandfather in a quiet neighborhood over- No way that's his mom. Where's her lips? Aye, that was hey, the where's, his, where's his mom's lips gone? Each Tyler was drawn to business, often sitting quietly behind furniture, listening to his mom's business meetings, and pleading to open his own bank account. By seventh grade, he was already on his grind flipping sneakers to make a profit. And when Aye, he entered Westosha Central as a freshman, his entrepreneur- Aye, was any of you lot selling stuff in school, bro? Entrepreneurs, if you're an entrepreneur now, Bro, I'm telling you, back in school, bro, you had to come to me if you wanted any candy, chips, anything like that. You was coming to me, bro. I was the in-school dealer. Any of you, were any of you like the dealer at school? Your skills only got sharp. While other students were caught up in sports and mowing down kids on Newtown, Tyler was learning the ropes of business, taking yeah, as man. many business and leadership classes as possible, while always looking for his next money-making gig. As his high school years, I like this guy. Thousands of dollars flipping used cars, while also investing heavily in the stock market. The day he turned 18, after Tyler graduated high school in 2018, he attended Carthage College and worked alongside his brother at his mother's real estate office. Now, he was still on his grind of becoming a young millionaire, but he was becoming restless. He wasn't content with being stuck working a typical job. He wanted more. He wanted something lucrative, something yeah, thrilling, that something that would fit the CEO type of lifestyle he always yearned for. But thankfully for him, his older brother Jacob had just the right thing for him. Jacob Huffines lived a vastly different life than his ambitious sibling. Born three years apart, Jacob spent a majority of his teenage years getting into some pretty serious shit. By the age of 17, he faced charges for marijuana possession and underage drinking. By 22, he was a convicted felon. And I don't think that's a crazy charge. Possession of, of weed and underage drinking. Obviously, I didn't drink. I only the, the like the first time I tried alcohol was when you're the legal age, and I took one shot. Like, I took some shots in it. Like I, I I never been a drinker, but growing up, I know a lot of people that drank underage, and honestly. None of them got caught for it. Like, it, it wasn't a big deal. So that's that. Set, putting that one on someone's name is kind of meaty. Earned himself some jail time on charges of dealing cocaine and running a drug house. Oh, never but mind. Hey, what? Hey, I take that back. Man's running a drug house. Into, Jacob Aye. always found a way back 
into the drug trade. He never learned from his mistakes and instead dove headfirst into learning all about the world of dealing. And his eagerness to continue selling drugs aligned perfectly with the rise of THC carts. Oh, Mind you, no. this was early 2018, Fake a time weed, when man. these products were starting to catch fire and become super popular. Legal gray Bro, area. Can you not just by looking at them carts, you know it's not real fam, that looks like a cartoon. Is in a growing demand for discreet, high potency cannabis products. We're creating a gold mine for those willing to take the risk of dishing them out. And Jacob, who was already deep into this world, saw the potential to make a shitload of money from selling these cards and was willing to take that risk but not alone. Tyler's ambition to make massive amounts of dough paired with Jacob's vast knowledge of dealing was a match made in heaven. A Aye, match that man. Tyler simply couldn't resist. When Jacob laid out his idea to Tyler, he was completely on board. And just like that, the boys started to craft up a plan. Their strategy was Must simple. They wanted to create an operation that cut costs and maximized profits by selling counterfeit vape cartridges. In other words, they hey, wanted to establish- man, do you know how many people they actually probably fucked over? Which what's known as a pen. Health-wise, I'm not even talking about bread, bro. Like, the money doesn't matter, bro. Not even the money, the health, bro. What are these men smoking? If it's not weed, what are you putting into your lungs, bro? In fact, a low-profile operation that essentially served as a middleman between THC liquid suppliers and high schoolers who wanted to get fried. Their plan revolved around sourcing empty vape cartridges and branded packaging from Chinese manufacturers for dirt cheap and then filling them with THC liquid that the boys obtained from California. Basically, they wanted to pass off their carts as legit for as cheap as possible. Is that scummy? Oh. Absolutely. But like, it's real THC liquid though. It was profitable, and they made it even more profitable by opting to cut their THC liquid with cheaper oils that contained vitamin E acetate. Sound familiar? This How would you like vitamin E acetate? Isn't that the thing that when it gets heated up, when it gets heated up, yeah? It's, it becomes like a, a poisonous chemical. Liquid with cheaper oils that contained vitamin E acetate. Sound familiar? This approach used less of their expensive core ingredient while still making their product look legit, which in turn increased their margins with minimal overhead. However, even though they had a solid plan set up, the duo still had no clue where they would set up shop. I mean, Tyler probably had enough money saved up to buy a place, but they wanted to keep costs down as low as possible. So, where would they go? They well, was doing it in their house. Don't tell me they was doing it in their own crib, bro. Turned out the answer was close to home. Courtney Huff Hines wasn't- Oh my company. bro, that's she a rookie a mistake! Agent ...in the West Tosha area with a larger than life personality that perfectly matched her career. If you lived anywhere around Paddock Lake, chances are you saw her bright red- Bro, no, imagine your mom says, oh yeah, come, come do your drug, come do your drug operation in my house. Bro, I know nobody's parents is that fried, bro. She has to be on some drugs. She does look a bit fried, bro. I don't know if it's the AI, bro. Like, I don't know if it's the AI, but she looks a bit like... She does some... You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a real estate agent in the West Tosha area with a larger-than-life personality that perfectly matched her career. If you lived anywhere around Paddock Lake, chances are you saw her bright red blazers on real estate ads or her smiling face on Instagram, promoting her new listings or showing off her family's Aye. latest vacation. But beyond the posts and business attire, Courtney was someone who valued ambition and wasn't afraid to take risks. She had spent over two decades in the real estate game. She built her career by working with well-known real estate companies Whoa, South why is she gonna ruin her whole career for this? Eastern Wisconsin and eventually opened her own place called Realty Executives Unity. And despite filing for bankruptcy back in 2012, she was back on her feet by 2018 and opened a brand new real estate office in Union Grove, Wisconsin, about 15 minutes from Paddock Lake. She was all about success, resilience, and self-belief. But it turns out her success wasn't just limited to selling homes. If you know what I mean. The boys approached their nah. mother with their plan, pitching bro, it as some no kind of No way the mom is like, this is a good idea. She has a full legit business, bro. She's fully legal, bro. Like what? How is she fully legit? Endeavor that required a home base. And shockingly, instead of slamming the door on their wildly illegal idea, Courtney did the exact opposite. She gave it her blessing and even allowed them to use her office in Union Grove to get things started. I knew it was gonna be some, bro, you can't sh Have you ever heard that saying where you can't shit where you sleep, bro? 
You can't do bad stuff where you lay your head because people are gonna, it's gonna come back on yourself, bro. It's almost surreal to imagine. Like on one side is Courtney's nice real estate office and on the other side, her own sons are filling carts with boo. On January 16th, 2018, Tyler, Jacob, and Courtney kicked off their new startup with nothing more than some empty vape carts, a bit of THC distillate, and a lot of ambition. Tyler, the number one man in the operation, knew that scaling this type of business required, well, learning the business. And this is where a man named Moo came into play. Moo, who was not a cow, but rather the boys plug from California. What? Bro, and you always, bro, they never show their face, bro. It's the same with all of these stories, bro. It's all, bro, this nigga's gonna be the back door. Watch it, bro, watch. It wasn't just their supplier of THC distillate. He became Tyler's mentor. Oh Over my countless God, this always happens. Moo walked Tyler through every step of making counterfeit cards, like how to dip the caps in alcohol to avoid leaks and how to properly fill them. Tyler picked up this skill rather quickly and and began making his dank vapes and chronic sour patch kids cards all by himself. Bro, I know you remember the bro when I was in bro, bro, this is the first when vapes first like coming out, bro. Dank vapes, bro, I remember, and everyone was saying, bro, don't hit these, bro. They were bad, bad, bad. These times it's this guy. It was this guy's fault that bro, in my school, bro, you guys know I moved to Americans so like so in England weed vapes didn't come out for until a longer time, bro. It was in America first. Bro, I'm remembering seeing this stuff. I would this time, like I would, I was doing what I was doing, but I was never touch carts in school and shit, bro. Cause I knew, bro. I knew, I, bro. I knew sign was up with this, bro. That's my intuition, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Why annihilations right there, bro? After he got in the swing of things, it wasn't long before he decided he needed to invest in more supplies. Over Labor Day weekend in 2018, he flew to California, carrying $300,000 in cash to purchase more distillate. A fucking insane move for a kid straight out of high school. The trip secured the steady supply of THC bands. oil the brother. He threw 300 bands over, bro. And these times, the, and then at TSA be checking me. TSA, when I'm in the airport, when I'm in the airport, Tapping me, checking my dreads to see if I have anything in my dreads. My man's flying over with 300,000 illegal dollars. And you're checking me. Because you think what? Because I've got a camera and some SD cards and a laptop. Bro, I, I, bro, imagine every time I go airport, I'm getting searched, I'm getting questioned, I'm getting asked every time what I'm doing, where I'm going, this, that. And this guy can fly over with 300,000. Bro, it's getting me mad, bro. It's getting me mad, bro. It's getting me mad, bro. The, I wish I was white, man. I wish I was white. Life would be easier, bro. And I, I'm not even, see, me, these times, I'm not even a suspect. But they, they look at me like I'm a suspect. Then then you got these guys flying with 300,000, they're a suspect, and they don't look at them like nothing, bro. Ah, oh, man. There's needed to ramp up production, which led them to the tall task of building their team. They started out by hiring a few associates to help fill the carts, paying them $20 an hour to do so, well above the Wisconsin minimum wage at the time. And for a while, their system of filling and selling carts out going? of Courtney's office was running smoothly Aye. until one of their associates got stopped by the cops. Now, although this little situation didn't blow up their operation just yet, it was enough to make Tyler and Jacob hit pause. And I know for a fact, they were shitting their pants, bro. Bro, they were like, bro, this is over. We're about to get snitched on. We're about to get snitched on. Imagine you just hired somebody. You're running this operation. Everything's going well. Now, somebody that you slightly know has got caught by the police, bro. This, thing, this nigga's not even going to sleep, bro. He's like, bro, they're about to... And think over. about a new location to start filling their carts. Something way more conspicuous. They set their sights on a condo in Bristol Bay, a peaceful neighborhood in the village of Bristol. Tyler, already having trust from sketchy randos in the state, turned to California to find a guy and pay them to steal a man's identity, which he then used to rent out the condo. Once again, a fucking insane move for a kid who couldn't legally drink. But this wasn't even the craziest part. Courtney was the one who brokered the deal for the condo and was well aware that her own son was not only using a fake ID, oh my identity to rent bro, it. Bro, this is see they were about how are you mixing the lynch business with oh my bro, I see. See, this is why white people should not be doing this stuff, bro. This is your you you're doing stuff in plain sight, thinking that you're not gonna get caught because you're white, bro. See, see if niggas was bro, see niggas would never do this, bro. Black people would not do this. Easiest part. Courtney was the one who. And I'm not even trying to make this about race, but she, bro, she's using her legit business to to to, to wash this money through, right? Brokered the deal. That's the most retarded thing. I, I understand laundering money, like, bro. I get when people launder money, right? 
But you gotta loan the money, not in a way through your Lidge name, everything. Like you're ruining your whole Lidge business right now. Bro, she said, she said, yeah, she had this business 20 years. For the condo and was well aware that her own son was not only using a stolen identity to rent it, but also knew that they were about to run a full fledged drug ring out of it. Courtney, honey, what are we doing? And somehow Thank no you. one suspected a thing. What for are you condo doing? Deal. And it soon became the center of their ever expanding empire. Over the next year and a half, their operation absolutely exploded. They went from a few helpers here and there to a full team of 10 workers who were filling between three and 5,000 cartridges a day. Which Bro, 5,000, hold on. Just do, just say they're selling the carts for like, maybe they're doing it wholesale. So let's say they're selling it for 20 a cart, right? 20 times, 5,000 carts a day. They're making 100 bands a day. Are you fucking mad? 100 bands a day. 100 bands a day. That's 100... Quakes to over 2.9 million carts over that time frame. Also during that time frame, Mr. Krabs, I mean Tyler, tightened up the operation's workflow even more to increase productivity and reduce costs. He did so by switching his workers from being on hourly pay to paying 30 cents per cart they fill, an equation he calculated would create more carts and cost less for him. You realize it would be more cost effective according to Tyler? If you started paying him 30 cents a cartridge, he would save or he would make an additional $2.20 a cartridge. From when they started in early 2018. Wait, what? Hold on, let me hear that. I, that was, I didn't hear that. The operations workflow even more to increase productivity and reduce costs. He did so by switching his workers from being on hourly pay to paying 30 cents per cart they fill, an equation he calculated would create more carts and cost less for him. He realized it would be more cost effective according to Tyler. If you started paying him 30 cents a cartridge, he would save or he would make an additional $2.20 a cartridge. From when they started in early 2018 to around August 2019, the Huff Hines were killing it. That Wait, so how many, so that, so if he changed it from 30 cents to a uh, 30 cents a cart, so what, let's just say every four carts is, is what, a dollar 20 cents. So that's every four carts is a dollar 20 cents. So let's just say, so that means that they would need to fill what? What fourth? They were, bro, they, that's fucked. That's that's not good, bro. <laughs> that's not good at all. They were they 2018 to around August 2019. More carts and cost less for him. You realize it would be more cost effective, according to Tyler. If you started paying him 30 cents a cartridge, he would save or he would make an additional two dollars and twenty cents a cartridge. Two dollars and twenty cents a car. Okay, so again, twenty an hour. So for them to make that same twenty an hour. They need to sell, I mean, they need to fill over a hundred carts in an hour. Uh, that's, f bro, that's more, that's, nah, that's fried, bro. They would need to sell, m do more than a hundred carts in an hour. From when they started in early 2018 to around August 2019, the Huff Hines were killing it. Thousands upon thousands of carts were being manufactured and sold from the condo, some of which were even making it to neighboring states like Illinois and Minnesota. This officially made them a multi-state operation with absolutely no suspicion from anyone. Now, their neighbors would see Jacob, Tyler, and the gang constantly leave and come back from the condo, but they didn't think anything of it. They thought it was all normal. Well, everything seemed normal until a couple of parents about an hour away from the- Bro. Bro. See, that's the, the only thing I will say they're smart about is blending in. They, they went to like, I know they went to like a white neighborhood and they just went there and it was a mom, two kids, like it just looked normal, innit? Like they blended in. Thought it was all normal. I give hats off for that. Well, but everything seemed normal until a couple of I can't believe the mom has used her Lidge business, bro. It, this, that shit still fry in my head. Parents about an hour away from the operation caught their kid doing something naughty. A mom and a dad were shocked to see their kid getting stoned off a cart in early July 2019 in Waukesha, an affluent suburb near Milwaukee. I've the never parents heard of that, to hold their high schooler accountable marched him down to the local police station to turn himself in. Which, I mean, is a little extreme, mm -hmm. right? But regardless, the parents made their kid talk with the Waukesha police. Right, what are you doing if, if your mom catches you... If your mom and dad catches you... With Zah, bro, they take you to the police, bro. I feel like that's a bit backdoor, bro. I'd rather that my parents, like, give me the little beats than taking me to police, bro. Because that could just, especially if you're in a state, bro. I don't know if in this state it's legal, but that could just, like, that could just fuck your life up, bro. They could just put a charge on your name. Your parents don't even know what they're doing, bro. Is 
a little extreme, right? But regardless, the parents made their kid talk with the Waukesha Police Department and discuss where he got the cart from, which is when he showed them Tyler's Snapchat. Now, Tyler would constantly post about the thousands no of carts. No way he, he still do. He was doing one hand to hand deal still while he's making the carts, bro. That's another mistake right there, bro. How are you doing hand to hand deals and, and you, you, you're making 5,000 carts a day? That don't make no sense stock his piles of money along with his constant trips to california to re-up his supplies all of which was a gold mine of information for these cops tyler set up an account on snapchat and sold product using the name wisco bad boy after seeing this the waukesha police department launched an investigation meticulously tracing dealers and anyone else that could be a part of the operation the evidence stacked up quickly and within a month the waukesha cops teamed up with the kenosha drug operations group and the racine county metro drug unit to find finally oh, take down no. the Huffines operation. Oh, On September 5th, 2019, around 6 a.m., authorities executed search warrants at the three locations connected to the Huffines. Their childhood home in Paddock Lake, their condo in Bristol, and Courtney's office in Union Grove. The first raid took place at the family's home. Inside Tyler's room, officers found around $48,000 in cash and a fully loaded shotgun with one in the chamber. Inside Jacob's room, they found a loaded rifle, cocaine, weed, a digital scale, some carts, nine Xanax pills, and around 11,000 Oh, cash. these guys were fried too, bro. These guys were fried too. Man had cocaine, six grams of coke. You know he was that was personal use. Just nine nine Xans, personal use. I don't know about the cash and shit, but... That's and around the house, detectives discovered eight other firearms and assorted drug paraphernalia. Up next was the Holy Grail, the condo in Bristol. Oh, At the condo, no. officers found... No, 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 found they're gonna find bare vapes. They're gonna find bare vapes. 31,200 THC vape cartridges ready for shipment, 98,000 unfilled carts, and 57 mason jars filled with THC distillate worth around $342,000. There were also three money counting machines, 18 pounds of weed, and stacks of empty packages for brands like Dank Vapes and Chronic Sour Patch Kids. This is also where Jacob and Tyler were found and arrested. The no the way they were in the grid. Executed warrant. Bro, they no way they it's 6 a.m. too, so that means they were probably asleep or they're working. If they're working, I I, I rate it, but if you're sleeping there, that's you're lacking, bro. Either were found and arrested. The Kenosha County Sheriff's Department executed warrants. How did they find how did they find that address if it was under fake ID though? That's a bit weird. Last week on two county properties, two men have since been arrested, two brothers. Lastly, authorities searched Courtney's real estate office in Union Grove. At the time, the place had been mostly cleared out, but police still found leftover packaging materials and drug paraphernalia. Enough to show that the office was a critical part of the operation at one point. And as a result, Courtney was arrested a few weeks later. All the THC. Hey, did they snitch on that bomb? All the packaging, everything that was there in the in the Bristol uh, condo was also there in the back of her office. So now, with did all they three snitch on that bomb, how did the bomb get caught? Cuffs. It was obvious they're going to be slammed with the book, right? I mean, an illegal multi-million dollar operation, identity fraud, a shit ton of firearms, selling millions of carts across state lines, and you know, millions of untaxed dollars too, bro. <laughs> I, I know the IRS was happy. Tyler, Jacob, and Courtney were all charged with some pretty serious crimes, as you can see on the screen. I mean, it's literally enough to fill the entire screen. And after looking at all of those charges, it seems like some pretty serious shit. But whatever god-tier lawyers they hired got them out of all of it. Jacob was only fined $10,000 and placed on two years probation. Courtney was fined a total of $15,000. And Tyler, who was the one who spearheaded this entire Wait, thing, what? was not fined at all and only placed on three years probation. I, I just don't know how to explain that. All three of the people connected to the largest black no, this market is white teams privilege. they bring in. This is white privilege. Um, hey, if these guys were black, Bro, they would have gone and said, oh yeah, these cars were killing people. You, They would have put murder charges on their names. They would have done all these next things. Bro, how have these guys made millions of dollars? Okay, maybe they, they got their money seized and everything like that. And the business closed and stuff like that. How have these guys made millions of dollars, sold all these drugs? They, they literally found them with bad drugs, bro. Th hundreds of thousands of dollars made from the drugs. And these niggas didn't even go, have to go to jail. Do you realize that they didn't have to go to jail? They got probation. They went court and they went home after that. If they were black, they would have they would have got life. Deep that. They would have got life. 
in the US all avoided prison time and pretty much got away with everything. Nah, that's fu- Bro, no, Loki, why am I pissed by the outcome? Why am I- No, obviously nobody deserves to go to jail. Obviously no one deserves to go to jail, but why am I pissed by the outcome, bro? That's bad, bro. That's gonna make people think in their head, oh, I could do something like that and not get in trouble. And then you're not gonna give them a slap on the wrist. You're gonna slap them under the jail, bro. <laughs> you're gonna slap them under the jail. Hey, right, you guys let me know down below what you think of the outcome of that video. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That charge was a bit too light, bro. That charge was a bit too light, bro. I know people that have gone to jail for doing way, 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 like, less worse things. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why I feel like I'm a bit pissed at the outcome, but hey, if you guys did enjoy that video, make sure you guys let me know down below and I will react to more stuff like this. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys tomorrow in another video. Make sure you guys keep running up the main channel too. Aye, the main channel is going crazy right now. Let's get 200K on the main channel. Let's get to 50K on this channel. Let's keep running it up. I'll catch you guys. Tomorrow. Oh my God, this pussy is mad. Bella stay back on my phone. And Stacey won't leave me alone. Don't really mad, I can tell by her tone that Leah just come back home for the bone. Emma hit me for some bit. And Ava still think that I'm rich Alexa, Kayla, Mia, Anna, yo They all got kicked out of the crib I